So why don't you say I identify with bliss and happiness in my relationship mm -hmm. and allow God, the universe, life to bring you the suitable man for that? That's good. Thank you. I thought that was good. Yeah, that's yeah. good. <laughs> And when you pick people, you're not identifying with what it is that you want. You know what I'm saying? So identify first, I want to feel this way. I want to wake up with so much excitement. And I want to look back at the bed and see him laying there with all the muscles. I'm going to be like, baby, I'm going to make you something for bed. Just don't get up. I'll be back in just a few minutes. And I feel so good going downstairs to make breakfast for my man. <laughs> because you've identified with what it is that you want instead of that person. Mm. And then when you get that person, they're not what you thought they were. Mm. Uh, now you're complaining. You couldn't wait to get them. And my question is, did you get what you wanted when you got what you got? You got them, but now they're not what you thought. So you identify. Here's what you really need to identify with. What's the feeling I want to feel? Many people want to feel joy. So identify with joy. Say, I identify with joy. I identify with joy. Say, I identify with peace. I identify with peace. Say, I identify with success. I identify with success. Say, I identify with perfect health. I identify with perfect health. Say, I identify with youthfulness. I identify with youthfulness. I was looking at people coming to our mom's funeral, and I watched how over the years people began to age. But you know where age starts? In the mind. So I'll lose some money, use some money. Okay, you got it up too. Okay, I'll lose some money. Okay. And, okay. See, you gotta raise my high, Mike. Okay. <laughs> Everything starts with the idea of yourself that you have in your mind, and then it gets over into your broadcast of you that you have to the world. So life is lived from the inside out, and not the outside in. It's even in the, the Christian Bible. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So, is he. so what is going to show up in that man's world? So what is showing up in that man's world is really a reflection of what's going on inside the man or inside the woman. So we want to work on the inside as much as we can. Is that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. This is really big because I, I need to get to a point in my life where I'm mastering the relationship with myself. We talked about that earlier, that life comes down to, or life is the outpicturing of the relationship between who and who? You and me. You and, me. You and you, make it personal. Say me and me. Me and me. me, and me. Okay? So the way I relate to myself determines what shows up in my life. The goal here is to become a master of that relationship between you and you. Now, when I was a kid coming up, I used to hear people say, you know, it's wrong for a person to be so aware of themselves and love themselves. And so for a long time, I was afraid to really love myself. I was like, ooh, I don't want to be a bad person. You know, because I was listening to a certain group of people and they told me, I had, mm -mm, watch that, you know, you, you love this or you love that, but watch this self love. And what I see now in a lot of people's lives, they're suffering because of the lack of self love. Now this is so huge. Because whatever you give yourself is what you're going to experience in life. And you're about to see in just a moment, what you don't give yourself is also what shows up in your life. Can we go a little further? Go mm ahead. -hmm. Check it out. My relationship with myself. So this is a woman, and look at her attitude toward herself. What's the person say right here? I can't, I can't do it. it. I can't do it. Oops, this is me messing up with the point. I can do it, OK? All right, I can't do it. What's the one say next to it? I'm not worthy. What's the next one say? I must be perfect. What's the next one say? I must not make a mistake. What's the next one say? I'm not good enough. What's the next one say? Nobody loves Now, here's my question here. Did anybody put that weight of burden on her? No, no. No. She's doing it to what? Herself. She's doing it to herself. And how is she doing it to herself? With words and with feelings and with ideas. So look at what she's thinking about herself. Look at what it's doing to her. And I tell the women this at the, at the women's shelter. I said, when you walk in the room, I can, I can read your mind by the way you carry yourself. How you carry yourself is really a broadcast as to how it is and what it is that you think about yourself and feel about yourself on the inside. 
And there's a common word in a lot of these. What's the first word in most of these? Ah. Ah. So this is how she's looking at herself. I can't do it. Maybe she can do it. What if she's believing the wrong thing about herself? Has anybody ever done that? <laughs> believe the wrong thing about yourself? You believe the lie that you told yourself? So she is decrepit, she's broke down, she's sweating, she's just uh, having a really rough time, not because of what's happening to her, but because of what she's doing to herself. when you're doing this. You want that new job? Well, I was going to apply for it. Ah, but I better not. Stop it. See what you just did yourself? What do you mean you better not? Who's better for that job but you? I know, man, but I don't have a college degree. It doesn't make a difference. It really doesn't make a difference. I don't have a college degree, and I'm the most educated man in this room tonight. <laughs> I want to take the baby's attention, okay? All right? It's what you give yourself. So, ladies and gentlemen, we got to raise the bar on what it is that we're giving ourselves. Because what I think about myself becomes myself. What I think about myself becomes myself. What I feel about myself becomes myself. We don't want this to be us. So this is how we can master this relationship with ourselves. Let's read this one because this is an area that we must master. So what must you master, number one? The way I see myself. So I want you to say, I must master the way I see myself. Go. I must master the way I see myself. I've got to change the ideas that I have about me in my mind. What's the second one say? Ready? Go. I must master what I think of myself. You've got to catch yourself when you're thinking a thought about yourself. Here's a prime example in a prime area. How many of you got mail today? You got mail at home. You go to the mailbox, you grab the letter out, and here's a statement here that's a disconnection notice. And so we're gonna shut it off in, in 30 days if the, if the bill is not paid. Immediately an idea goes through your mind. You are broadcasting that I don't have the wherewithal to pay this. Rather than saying, <laughs> first energy, really? I identify myself as a person who always has their bills paid. Fold it up, stick it in your pocket, and in your mind, see it paid. You see the shift? You see the transition that has to take place? So when life is giving you something from your old way of thinking, you got to change your mind. Say, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. What's another area that you got to master? I'm going to master my life. I'm going to get into that in just a moment, where you talk about yourself, OK? How are you doing today? Oh, I'm, I'm all right. I'm, I'm OK. That's the wrong answer, <laughs> right? People see me and say, hey, Myron, how are you doing? I say, oh, man, I'm, I'm the best thing going. I'm exceptionally well. And they think I'm smoking something, <laughs> because I answer that way. But again, what you put out is what you're going to get back. Right, right. I'm not just answering to that person. That person is a part of the life system. So when life throws me a question, hey, how you doing? I want to talk high. I want to talk up. So I got to really master the way that I describe myself. And what's the, very, what's the next one say? Uh-oh. Say, feel about myself. Now read the whole thing. Ready to go. I must master how I feel about myself. Because everybody has a feeling. Everybody sitting here right now has a feeling about yourself. Everybody came to the funeral Saturday. You know, people come up, oh, I'm so sorry about your mother. But mom is in a better place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I could feel the tug. You know, pulling me down, say, oh, hey, thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. It's going to be a reception after looking up because their heaviness right. tied a noose around me. Yeah. I spent the day on Sunday undoing all of that burden and all that sorrow. I don't want your sorrow. Give me your strength. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, right there. Y'all, yeah. really? You want strength? You don't want yes. anybody sorry for you? I never want sorrow. Right. Sorrow doesn't lift me up. Mm -hmm. I want to go up to a whole nother octave. Can y'all do that with me? I know it's hot in here. Okay. I want to go to, y'all ready? I want to go to a whole nother octave. Yeah, I want to go up. Yeah. 
on my Facebook page, about 500, I'm so sorry. And I know the intention, mm -hmm. but the power of words still works. I love the people that say, you know what? Hey, you're going to be all right. That's lifting me up. But the whole sorry thing will pull you down. All right? And I even want to say this as well, that if you make a mistake or if there's any kind of mishap for anything that you do, you, you back into somebody's car and bump it, you know, or you forgot to do your sister's hair, you say he was going to do it. And normally when we apologize for something, what's the two words we use to identify ourselves? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen, let me help you with this. Never, ever, ever, ever use the words sorry. I'll give you all an assignment. Look up the word sorry tonight. Google it. Just Google the word sorry, Mike. Just sorry. Hey, Siri. Maybe? Yes. Uh, what's the definition of the word sorry? Maybe something that you are not. Oh, thank you, Siri. I'm glad you understand. <laughs> Google the word sorry and see what it means. And look at what you, how you identify. You don't want to identify with sorriness. Identify with, you know what, I apologize. That's better. But not, I'm sorry. Because there's nothing sorry about you if you really knew yourself the way you need to know yourself. And the very last one here says what? I'm not what I expect of myself. So these are areas that we've got to work on. These are areas that we really have to give our attention to. And you have to master it. Now, mastery is not something you do on a part-time basis. You know, next, next Thursday, Thursday after next, I'm going to work on mastering how, what I feel about myself. It doesn't work that way. Mastery is something that you focus your mind on, you've got your attention on, and you're doing it day after day, all the time, until it becomes habitual. We're creatures of habit. And the reason why we do what we do is because there was a first time that we did it and it was unfamiliar. And then we thought about it and we did it again. And then we did it again another time. And that happened so many times until where what you're doing became habitual. It became something that you're not even conscious that you're doing. So all of these areas in our lives that we need to work on, you can't just say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, people do this on, on New Year's Eve. Oh, we're coming to the year 2045. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm going to be exuberant and full of life. That guy Myron back in 2018 said, yeah, I'm full of life, man. So I'm going to be full of life. I'm going to, in this new year, that's what I'm going to do. And you say it one time, and there's no follow through on the decision. And where there is no follow through, there is no results that can show up. So a mastery of life is something that you want to work on. If a mastery of life class was being offered, how many of y'all would be interested in attending? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Bam. All right, self-mastery is what we want to work on. I'm going to be offering a self-mastery spiritual class starting in the month of June, all right? It's going to be offered to you eight weeks, eight sessions. Can I count the eight? Eight sessions, <laughs> all right, with, with yours truly, 90 minutes each. And the goal is to get to the good on the inside of you and help you to develop the very thing that gives you power over your life, okay? Remember that song? I got the power. <laughs> uh. Right? you got the power, you have that power, that power is within you, and you want to activate it and use it. Picking up the speed here. There's a quote that says, until I control that which controls me, my life remains exactly the same. Everybody look up here at the screen real quick. Look at this. You ever feel like you're being controlled by something that's not visible? Well, y'all some perfect people. Can, Trey, can we go find some people that, you know, need some help? I'm just seeing. How many of you ever feel like you're being controlled by something other than you? Sure. Let me see your hands if you ever felt that way. That there's some, some invisible force, some invisible reality. Um, I know for religious people, it's the devil. The devil did this to me. He got me. He got me. Let me go, devil. He got me. It's not the devil. It's something else. And it's closer to you than you realize. Until I control that which controls me, my life stays the same. I keep meeting the same type of people. Why do these type of people keep showing up in my life? Because there's something in you that needs to change. Why do I keep getting customer service jobs? I was over here doing customer service, then I went to this job, and it was customer service. Then I said, oh, I'm gonna go over here to this job, and guess what it is? Customer service. Then my family member started the business, I'm gonna go help them out, and guess what position they put me in? <laughs> customer service. So why do I keep experiencing the same type of thing over and over? Because there's a control inside of me that I don't know about. And that's most people. You've got to find the control. My son has an Xbox. And with this Xbox, he sits down 
and he creates an avatar, and with this controller in his hand, he makes an avatar on the screen do all kinds of stuff with a controller. And there's a controller in life, you are the avatar. You're the one in the screen of life being controlled by something. that you have about yourself. Until you cut what presently exists in all of these areas, you'll continue to be controlled by what you're presently thinking about yourself. So you got some work to do on you. Now I'm not saying this to put anybody down. And y'all, if you feel like I'm putting you down, that's not the case. I'm not putting anybody down. I'm just trying to hold up a mirror in front of this group tonight to say, hey, you got more power than what you realize. But I think many times in life, we think it's easier to try to change you than for me to work on me. I want you to take a cell phone out, take a picture of this right now. Come on, just grab your cell phone. Go ahead. Take a picture of this. <laughs> I'll let y'all take a picture of it. Because this is powerful. This is a guidebook for the things in your life that you need to work on. And there's some thoughts you need to cut away from. There's some beliefs you need to cut away from. Well, Mike, what do you mean there's some beliefs I need to cut away from? There's some things your mama and your auntie and them that raised you, told you when you was a kid, that simply are not the truth. And you have to be willing to replace those things with a total new thought. There's some feelings that you have about yourself. Trust me, I know. Because I carry around feelings about me for years. Um, I got one of my old high school friends sitting right here. We went to elementary school together. Carlise is here. And I'm sure tonight, the way I'm up here expressing myself and talking, she's probably thinking, what, where did this band come from? Because if you go back 30 years, I'm 54 years old, you go back 30-something, well, you go back 40-something years from when we were at Crowd School, this is not who I was because I had a different belief, idea, and feeling about myself. But evolution is probably the best thing that could ever happen. I have another good friend here, Ida. She's a 